I love coffee just as much as the next guy. Well, maybe not as much <laughs> as Mr. Adam Reed, but I would never spend more than $100 on a coffee maker. Now, Adam, I know you're a coffee guy. Would you spend a lot of money on a coffee maker? You know, I love coffee, Julia, but I'm a cheapskate at heart, <laughs> and I'm with you. I don't really want to spend that much on a coffee maker either. The last time we tested high-end coffee makers, it was a $300 machine I that know. won makes really good coffee, but it begged the question in my mind, and it sounds like yours too, can you have great coffee for less money? Mm -hmm. And we have this lineup of nine machines here with a price cap of $100. That's a lot of machines. A lot of machines, but only $100 or less. Mm -hmm. We know from experience that the ratios of coffee to water that get recommended in the manuals are all over the place, and yeah. we wanted an even playing field. So we use the recommendation of the Specialty Coffee Association of America. Their ratio is one part coffee to 18 parts water. We also use tap water because most mm -hmm. people at home will use tap water. And we use medium roast beans that we bought in bulk and ground in batches in a commercial grinder. Now let's talk about timing and temperature a little bit. Temperature first. You don't want water at the full boil when you're brewing coffee. Hmm. You want it to be between 195 degrees and 205 degrees to get all the right flavors out of the coffee beans. You also don't want to brew it too fast or too slow. A whole pot should take no more than eight minutes. So we look for guidance again from the Specialty Coffee Association, measuring the temperature of the water as it goes into the brew basket, measuring the temperature of the finished coffee, and timing the brew cycle. And it was sort of surprising what we found. That temperature range of 195 to 205, a lot of the machines never even made it into that range. Really? They fell short of the range altogether. Some of the machines that did make it into the range only spent about 10% of their brew cycle there. The one that did the best, that made it into the range and spent 71% of its brew cycle was this one right mm. there. The next tests, our testers put on their coffee geek hats and they <laughs> got out their coffee refractometer <laughs> and they measured the total dissolved solids in the coffee, which will give you an extraction level. And that's just talking about how many of the compounds get dissolved in the water and that really reflects on how the coffee tastes. What you're looking for there is a range of 18 to 22%. And this one machine that did well with the timing and the water temperature was right in the sweet spot, 21.6%. Mm. Some of them were as low as 11%, which resulted in weaker coffee. So in the end, this is actually the one that we loved the best. This is the Bonavita eight cup, one touch coffee maker. It's 94 bucks, as yeah. I promised, less than 100. Makes really good coffee. It's simple to operate. One switch turns Ooh. it on and off. The parts are easy to pull out and clean. It's got a thermal carafe, which we loved. And it was also the best buy in our high-end coffee maker testing. Above and beyond that, there's an even better recommendation. Our director and his wife, who are coffee machine skeptics, <laughs> love this machine. So it gets a solid real world recommendation. All right, so this is the all-star. If you're in the market for a new coffee machine, try out the Bonavita eight cup, one touch coffee maker for just $94. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.